Hello, in this presentation, we're going to work a problem related to a job cost system. So remember, in a job cost system, we will be working with the production of inventory, and it's usually going to be production of inventory that is not the same in nature. So when we produce things, we often use a process cost system or a job cost system. We would generally use a job cost system when the things that we produce are not the same in nature. And also, unlike a merchandising company where we're just going to buy stuff and then we sell stuff, in the manufacturing company, what's happening is that we are creating the stuff. So we're actually making the stuff, the inventory being the stuff. So we're making, we're buying the raw material, we're processing that raw material, then we have the finished good, then we sell the finished good. So we need to track that process as we go. We're assuming that these finished, these items are not the same in nature. Uh, sometimes it's it, you, we can think about like a construction company doing jobs. Uh, if we're a tiling kitchens and whatnot, we might tile one kitchen that's a lot larger than the other kitchen. And therefore, uh, we have this problem of how do we allocate things to the jobs, such as overhead, when the jobs are different sizes. So those are the types of things we're going to talk about. And we are going to use this information. We're going to post journal entries into the blue area here. We're going to then, um, we're going to record the journal entries in the blue area. Then we'll post the journal entries to the general ledger over here. So here's the general ledger. It has every account that we will be using, uh, starting with cash, assets in green, and then the liabilities and the equity accounts. And over here in the income and the expenses, we will then, uh, once we post things, everything to the general ledger, then it will automatically populate the trial balance over here. So for example, uh, this number, is coming from that number on the general ledger and that is the case all the way through here so we'll be able to see what is happening as we go through this problem and note that the new thing is that we are also going to have to track this number uh the work in process not just by the general ledger which will be right here that ties out that's the same number the general ledger is by date but we also want to track it by job so you can compare that similar to the accounts receivable account. The accounts receivable account, we have 180,000 in it. If we look at the activity in the general ledger, we can see the activity by date. But in that uh, account, we also want to track it by who owes us money. So we want to list that 180 by client. Well, the similar kind of notion is going to be by the work in process. Work in process represents what has what is going on or what is in process at this given point in time in terms of inventory where we have these inventory accounts, raw materials. Uh, that's what we paid for it, so that it, it kind of is what it is. The work in process is, is what is we're working on, and then we're gonna transfer that to finished goods. So we're gonna have to back up this work in process. If we go over here, that's all the way over here in our job cost system. So our job cost system is backing that up by job. So we have these three jobs. They're not the same. You can think of them as like a construction company where we're working on a job or or we are creating something, creating, making inventory. We've got job 14, job 15, job 16. And if we add the totals up, the 41, the 42, and the zero, they add up to this 83, as we can see here. And that ties out, of course, to the 83 that we just saw on the general ledger and the trial balance. Now, when we think about us creating inventory, we got to get in our heads that uh, the inventory that we're making, what we're creating, it consists of the raw materials, whatever we're using to put into the inventory. That's the most obvious piece of the ending product. But remember that it also includes direct labor. So obviously, one, uh, for many types of things we make, the largest piece of it is oftentimes the labor. So how much, how much does it cost for the labor? That's basically a salary. So notice now we're not going to expense the salary for direct labor when the uh, employees are working, we're going to put that into the cost of the inventory and expense it when we sell the inventory. And then factory overhead is anything that we cannot apply to the job. So the problem with factory overhead is that we do not know which job you apply it to because either it's too small for us to, to uh, take the time to apply it, or it's something that's indirect, such as the rent on the warehouse or something like that. Uh, therefore, we're going to have to find some way to apply it to the job, and we'll talk about how we're going to handle that as we go. So just keep in mind, whenever we're making something, if we're producing something, whether it be a job cost or a process cost, we're going to have three factors in production that are included in the inventory. That's going to be direct materials, direct labor, and overhead. And we're also going to have basically three inventory accounts to deal with. 
that's going to be raw materials, work in process, finished goods. And then we're obviously going to sell it from that point. And then that's when we expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. All right. So let's first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide a few of these cells because because I want to work with just part of the cells and have everything as close together as possible. So I'm going to hide cells G to K. So I'm going to put my cursor on G. So you see the drop down left click highlight over to K, which is that little skinny one. Let go and then uh, right click on the selected area and hide that information. All right, so now we have what we're going to do here. We're going to post it into this area, and then we're going to have to record it over here on the general ledger. All right, so we're going to start off on 1-1, where we purchase raw materials on account. So I'm going to go through our series of questions as we go through this. This is going to be a fairly basic uh, start off. There's nothing uh, too unusual on this one. We're going to say, is cash affected? No, we didn't buy it with cash. We bought it on accounts. So we bought it basically with credit. So that's going to be the payable account. We may want to think about what we received, however, first in order to decide whether we should debit or credit the payable. So what did we buy? Raw materials. So if we look through here, we can see raw materials is, is up here. It's an asset. It's kind of basically part of inventory. So we're basically buying the raw materials that we are going to use to make our inventory. Uh, it's an asset. It has a debit balance. We got more of it. Therefore, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it as what it is, which is another debit. So I'm going to debit this account. I'm going to right click on it, copy it. I'm going to put it in C4, right click and paste one, two, three, just the values. We're going to debit the uh, raw materials. We're going to put the debits on top. Of course, we're going to debit it for 400,000. If we debit something, we're also going to have to credit something. And that credit will, of course, be the accounts payable. I'm going to represent credits with a negative. 400,000 for this worksheet. So it's in this case, it's in a credit column. However, it's also represented with a uh, negative number. So keep that in mind. That's going to go to the accounts payable. 